welcome to part two of our September garden tour. We're gonna take a look at what this space used to look like. This is our phase two of the garden oasis that we built throughout this spring and summer. Let's take a look at what it used to look like before it looks like this. So one of my favorite parts about our second phase of the, of the garden oasis here is the backdrop of corn. It, it really kind of like encose, um, encloses and cozies up the space. So I love the ornament, uh, ornamental corn in the background and the, uh, the blockage that it provides. This has become one of my favorites and I like and Casey can verify this. So as this gets bigger, it just like keep it keeps building layer upon layer upon layer. Or? Yeah. So this is the cut flower kale that we seeded indoors in March, and it's called Crane Red. The seed is from Johnny Seeds, and it's one of our favorite ornamentals here in the garden. So it's just like a cut flower kale, only it's a cut flower variety. So as you can tell, it gets very tall. So you when you do cut it. You're going to want to cut it all the way at the bottom and then as it sits in the vase the bottom leaves die off rather than the top of the flower dying so quickly so one of these i remember last year lasted a month and a half i had a bundle of them a month and a half in that the vase. is pretty good i mean yeah. typically a flower is going to give you a week yeah you know and then you got to throw it out so that's pretty cool yeah but you do have to change out the water every two to three days with it as well so okay yeah, so definitely one of my favorites. Uh, we also have some pumpkins here. All of our pumpkins got mildew this year, which we showed in our last video. Um, what was that one called? The pumpkin problems. It's just like with the pumpkin problems and the country gardens, getting ready for country gardens photo shoot. It's in that video near the end. We show the progress of our pumpkin patch because this year we're selling pumpkins. Well, selling pumpkin. <laughs> we got one out there we saw. <laughs> yeah, so they all got powdery mildew because um, in that video I, I, I explained why. So you can go there and watch that. But we've got pumpkins in here. And then I also added in some more sunflowers here. Um, this is These are those pro cut ones that I talked about in part one of the garden tour. Pro cuts are a cut flower variety of sunflowers. They have the smaller seeds, so smaller birds come to feed on them. So that's why you see, see that we still have the dead tops on them because uh, we get a lot of action over here. Yep. And then we've got uh, just some flowers here to fill in and make it bright and beautiful. These were some of the last beds that I planted up in the season. So we've just got some marigolds, nasturtiums, some zinnias, zinnias wave petunias. And then here's one of my little batches of beans. And um, these can be pulled now because we ate all the beans off of it and then it produced more while we were gone and now they're just, they're expired. They're done. Yeah, they're yep. done. <laughs> yep. And then we've got more pumpkin on a stick because yes. I'm really excited to have those for the ornamental look in a fall cut flower bundle. And um, that's kind of why we grew them. You can still eat them because they are an eggplant, but if you leave them on the vine, they become ornamental. And then we've got the melons growing off the end cap of this bed. And then over in this bed is all melons. Hey, Lana. What? Are you excited for all of these melons? To oh, I know I am. Are you ready to eat them? No. Take a look. Look, there's one there. There. Look at all these. I'm like. Look at all of these. Um, wow. No, I'm not excited about that, but I'm excited about school. Ooh, Lana's first day of school is on Wednesday. So a couple days away, and she is super excited, so we've been really busy prepping for kindergarten. <laughs> yep, it's a really exciting week for her. I'm also trying to clean up the garden. We had a big windstorm right before we got home, um, so 
there's a few things that are cracked and broken, which is fine. But uh, I'm just kind of going through and cleaning some of that up. And we got to take off some bad flowers. So that's another thing we'll be doing today. And that's one of the things that we really just enjoy doing in the garden. It's yep. pretty relaxing. And um, yeah, I mean, you got to love gardening to keep it up. Yep. You know? It's like that old guy that's got that car that he really loves and he's constantly out there buffing and waxing it non-stop. Yeah. That's yeah, what we I do in the garden. Right yeah. Earlier in the season, this spot was one of the most beautiful. It has the ornamental corn and some pickles here for us. And they were coming to an end, but I cleaned them up and I uh, let them just kind of go even though they look sparse. They are actually still producing pickles for us and not as many but I have to say that that's a good looking one I know it's ready to heat and it's gonna be so delicious I know it but I have to say we've had more pickles off of this plant than we ever have before and we believe it's because of our experiment of growing it with corn so I know I've talked about this in past videos but the reason why I wanted to try it growing next to corn is because I always find the best produce that's hidden where they are protected from the hot sun all day. So when I planted them with the corn, I want them to be a little protected. They still get full sun, they get enough sun, but they're at least giving, getting some of that protection from that really hot summer sun. So we get the sun for like almost 16 hours during the summer. So I have to say that this is definitely another area of the garden that we are going to duplicate next year because it worked out so well. Definitely. Great productivity over here. So this is one of our cut flower gardens and we have the same duplicate garden across. So I wanted these to be more of a pretty garden because they are in the front here through our driveway, running right in the middle of both gardening spaces. So I wanted to add more color without having to add more containers. One of my favorites this year in the garden are these snapdragons. This is the Madame Butterfly series. We hand seeded them inside of the house in March. And these are the ones that the girls helped me with as well. And we have about a hundred plants of them. Um, they're a cut flower variety. They have more of a double flower. If you notice that, that's the difference between these snapdragons and others is the actual double flower on them. And that is what convinced me to, to, to try them out. Cause I'm like, I'm already a snapdragon lover. So to see a double flower on it, you gotta get it. Yeah. Yep. And this too, there's probably only about a quarter of the snapdragons left from what it was back in like say July. Yeah. It would just, it looked yeah. amazing. And, um, and these here are one of the most asked about plants because I do have them mixed throughout all the gardens. Um, they are called Blue Victoria Salvia. They are a true blue variety. And they also attract hummingbirds, butterflies, bees, and they are a huge attractor in the garden for so many great things that we have to have them every year. Every year. Yeah. Definitely. And they and they are also a variety that is very easy to seed on your own and grow on your own. So in this bed we also have the cut flower kale as a nice taller backdrop and texture. And then in this little corner we have the state fair zinnias. State fair zinnias are one of my favorite because they grow nice and tall and they're perfect for bouquets. Here is the bed that's got the second big giant tropic cabbage. Look at this thing. It is huge and that still is. growing, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is definitely one of my favorites just because it's so unique. It's kind of like, you know, back in the dinosaur times, this is what all cabbage used to look like. Um, <laughs> but it's just kind of cool to see something like this big. It's a statement piece, you know? It is, it is. And actually, you know, you could pick it now and eat it. It would be fine, but I'm really trialing these. So I, I just want to grow them to see how big they get because we do have other cabbage we can eat in the garden. Right, yep. So this one's more of just like the show, the show stopper. Yep. Um, and then on the end here, we've got kind of forgotten about by me a little bit but the uh, the cucumbers and we've got a couple of uh, cucumbers here these are super good do um, you know what variety these are these are the burpless cucumbers okay mm-hmm oh look yep. at the bee yeah Bumblebee. Yeah. yeah and there's actually there's th this plant has produced really well 
There's so we kind of did the same thing with this, but instead of with the ornamental corn, I did a sunflower here, a mammoth sunflower, which will be blossoming soon. So it goes all the way up there. And yeah, this guy's been producing yeah. for us since late June. Between this bed and that container right there, it kind of gives it a little bit of protection. I'm gonna back up here so you guys can see. Gives it a little bit of protection and then the sunflower here gives it protection. So um, it's still getting a nice amount of sun, but once the sun sets, cause this over here is the east side, this is the west. So sunrise and then sun sets over there. And that allows it to have a little bit of time where it is protected from that hot sun. And that's what I believe is keeping them going. Lana and Fuzzy are like best friends, huh Lana? Did you tell everyone the news about Fuzzy? She's pregnant. Fuzzy's pregnant. Yep. Fuzzy, why'd you scratch me? Fuzzy's just been laying around. She's so tired, aren't you, Fuzz? I'm really tired. You're tired too? Yep, yes. she's starting to get a big belly. Yeah, she is. Aw. But we'll take good care of her. Yeah, right, we Lana? will. We've been giving her a lot of attention. I feel one baby. One baby? <laughs> no, two babies. Two babies. <laughs> this is another one of those areas with the ornamental corn and pickles. It's still producing. But when you get a big pickle like this. That's the Mac Daddy. Yep, when you get pickles. a big pickle like this, you don't want them to get that big. But if they do get that big, you want to take them off because these suck all of the energy out of the plant. And then that actually makes the plant not produce anymore. And it also makes odd shaped pickles because there's no energy to make any other pickles. So um, these guys have got to Yeah, go. they look like they're almost the uh, size of a watermelon. <laughs> I know. <laughs> We've got a nice little batch of peppers over here hiding. Here we go. These are a nice little red pepper. This one's actually pretty ready. Well, I'm gonna wait a little bit longer. I like my peppers to get real red. That's when they get super sweet. And I love a super sweet pepper, especially on a pizza. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sliced <laughs> real thin. <laughs> Toppled on top. Turn that broil on for the last few minutes. Gets them a little brown and crunchy. Ooh. It's delectable. It is, it's amazing. All right, and then this is the bed where the uh, where the potatoes were. Do you guys That's remember? Right. Remember me harvesting my potatoes and planting all up this little crummy looking plants? Well, look at how they look now. They're coming along amazing. They're looking awesome. Yeah, everything's looking really nice in here. Good. Yeah. All right. Well, here we've got our raised bed of sweet corn, and of course, it's going to produce sweet corn, so that's a, a pretty cool thing. I love the fact that it's actually grown in a raised bed. It's just a really cool looking raised bed when you look around all of the different uh, garden areas. To me, this one always stood out because you don't often see a box raised bed with corn and then you have the uh, flowering kale here kind of at the bottom. It was just a really cool looking uh, raised bed. So that was one of my uh, one of my favorites this year. Even Mine, too. Mine too. Mine too. do the pumpkin. So I've got a little hidden batch of tomatoes that were planted super late. I'm gonna show you. Over in this batch here, this is one of the last beds Jason filled during the season. And I tossed in some really ugly looking tomatoes. I mean ugly, they were this tall with only two leaves on top. So I planted them on the side because on the vine of the, of the tomato plant, it looks furry, those are all roots. So if you plant it on its side, it'll root in. And this is how huge it got. And also intermixed in there, I also have more of the, my, one of my favorite heirloom tomatoes, the pink Berkeley over here. And they actually look healthier over here. And over here, I did not put a tomato cage around them. I went old fashioned. This is how we grew tomatoes growing up in the fields. You have fields of tomatoes. You don't have time to put a cage around them. You let them grow on the ground. It looks good. It produced very well. It did. Mm -hmm. Everything looks so healthy, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, over here, too. Over here, we've got the uh, gypsy peppers. Look at these guys. These look really nice. And then right here, too, we've got one that's just about ready here. Mm -hmm. These are really sweet. Gypsy peppers have a really unique taste. They taste like a pepper, but they're a little sweeter with a little 
different aftertaste. I don't know. They just, they're great for grilling. So I nice. Like I don't think I've tried one of those yet. What? Really? I don't know. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And then we've got another little batch of beans and zinnias, which this whole area is a mess. I got to clean it up. <laughs> I'm getting anxiety. I need to clean it up. Once I start cleaning the garden, I am in like relaxation mode. So I'm ready to unwind after this after this garden tour and get things cleaned up. So. <laughs> well, we got some onions there in the corner too. Still standing up. Yep. These guys aren't ready yet. This was also a late area of being planted. So um, some of this stuff is coming in a little later. So yeah, I know you guys always think the garden's perfect, but this time of year it gets a little rougher looking and we kind of like it. Yeah, we do. It's kind of fun. And this trellis too. Whew. I mean, I finally feel like I'm walking through something here. It's got a roof on it. Yeah, so it's awesome. But don't forget that we did plant this trellis up later in the season as well. So next year we're going to plant it up four weeks earlier than this year. So imagine four more weeks of growing at this point. How yeah, it's going to be like a complete tunnel. How much more full it'll be. Mm -hmm. yeah. So another really cool thing about this area is you can walk through, pick some snacks on your way through. We've got, don't know what kind these are called, but they Those are just good. a cherry tomato. Regular cherry tomatoes. Yep. and then Sweet millions. You got the sun sugars on this side, so it's a uh, it's a cool uh, cool feature back here. Yep, Jason's dream area mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> came to reality. Yep. <laughs> One of the other cool things that I really liked about uh, these two raised beds here that kind of Casey was talking about before that had a lot of the cut flowers in them. She did the uh, the popcorn plants in these, and when the raised beds first started, they had a really cool yellow flower they're really really pretty actually and now they have grown it's almost like they're a little tree they're you know this thing's like three feet tall and it's cool because the leaves still smell like burnt popcorn i thought it was the flower that smelled like that and it probably was when i smelled it way back when but all of the leaves do too and all the new growth on here just yep. looks so really different it is kind of like a bush um, but it's not a perennial here, so it does not come back every year here in Wisconsin. But this is one of its flowers that's about to come into blossom. It's a beautiful yellow flower. Um, so the flower does smell like popcorn as well. Everything about it smells yeah, like popcorn. it's really cool. And it's also one of the girls' favorites as well. Yep, so it looks, it just kind of caps off the end of the bed here. And this was definitely one of my favorite ones too. And on the end caps of these two beds by the trellis, I did just some pretty flowers. So like some nasturtiums, this black one here, this trailer, that's called Alteranthera. So that's one of my favorites as well. And then we also have some of the cut flower snapdragons over there that's in the color apricot. And then we also have some of the millet grass because the birds are attracted to that once it seeds out. So we've got spaces that you know, produce a lot of food, but that also bring in, you know, your pollinators and your birds and your butterflies. And it brings in bad bugs, which brings in good bugs. So I feel like this year we finally had like that perfect balance. Like we do have like, you know, some bug problems, but not like we used to. I feel like True. we finally have a good balance. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna really take note of all these gardens this year because I feel like our combinations really contributed to having a very well balanced garden. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right, well that's gonna end this part two of the second phase of our garden. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you saw, subscribe if you're not already. Click the little bell for notifications. Thank you so much for following along and have a great rest of the week.